Hi there, this is Chris Chapman the Cap Motor Legends. Today, we want to talk you through some of our favorite products. Because we like the way the line sounded, we've titled this video, the top 24 products of 2024. We just thought it sounded catchy. But of course, we're not actually talking about products that are new for 2024 or new in 2024, because at the time of recording this video, which is January 24, we haven't seen much new stuff. And certainly the stuff that we have seen has not been tried and tested. The bottom line is we just wanted to talk through some of our favorite gear. It's as simple as that. That having been said, all of the gear that we're gonna be talking about today will in theory be available right through until the end of the year. Either way, we're going to hear about some great gear today. Finally, I've taken a bit of a lesson from Martin at Bike Stop. I'm gonna try and keep all of these videos down to just one minute. The Crosby is our favorite bell staff jacket. Indeed, it's our favorite wax cotton jacket, irrespective of the brand. The shorter Mojave jacket from bell staff can sit a little bit short. The longer Trial Master can sit so long that depending on your height, it can make you look as though you've got no legs at all. And on the Trial Master, the central belt can be, one has to admit, a bit of a faff. The Trial Master is also incredibly heavy. Now the Crosby sits between the two jackets, both the Mojave and the Trial Master in terms of length. It's made from a lighter wax cotton too, so it's easier to wear. On the bike, we tend to find that the length of the Crosby is just about right. It touches the seat. You won't find yourself sitting on the tail as you sometimes do with the Trail Master, but it's long enough such that the rain will not run down the jacket into your pants. The combination of wax cotton with a drop line and membrane, which is what the Crosby comes with, actually gives you near laminate levels of waterproofing. So this is an exceedingly waterproof jacket. It's rated double A under EN 17092 and comes with D3O Ghost in the shoulders and the elbows. There's a pocket for a back protector. You do not get any venting with the Crosby and there's no thermal liner, but really what do you expect? This is classic or this is a classic old school motorcycle jacket. The German company Daytona makes nothing other than motorcycle boots and they've been making motorcycle boots in the same factory since 1957. They make what most experienced motorcyclists would consider to be the best touring commuting boots that money can buy. The starting point is the best and most expensive hydrophobically treated leather. It's a hard wearing leather, yet it's incredibly supple. And it's gotta be said that this same leather forms the basis of most, not all, but of most Daytona boots. Now the Roadstar as it was, what is now called the Roadstar Pro, is the classic Daytona. It comes with a two zip entry, a twin zip entry system, and you get a volume adjuster here for the calf. The Gore-Tex liner, the waterproof liner, it's what's known as a Duratherm liner, which means it's an insulating liner. So this is a boot that you can comfortably wear throughout the winter. For protection, you've got counters in the toe, in the heel, and in the ankles. You've also got a galvanized steel shank that's embedded into the sole of the boot. But what makes the Roadstar, in particular the Roadstar Pro, the Daytona to have, is that it comes in so many sizes and configurations. It comes in a standard fit, a narrow fit, a wide fit, and even an extra wide fit. There's even a version with a heel lift for those who have taller bikes. As with all Daytona boots, they can be repaired for life at the factory. The truth is that if you buy a pair of Daytonas, you'll never need to buy another pair of motorcycle boots. No surprises here, I suppose. This is the single layer jean that Roka makes specifically for Moto Legend. It's a jean that we call the Roka Legend jean. The starting point is it's a simply brilliant jean in its own right. Even if you didn't ride a bike, this would be one of the best fitting, most comfortable, most stylish and most rugged jeans that you could buy. But by weaving in a super strong fiber, super strong UHMWPE fiber in with the cotton and the elastane, the legend becomes amazingly abrasion resistant. It rates AA under EN17092, but more importantly, under the more stringent EN13595 protocol, this gene records a six second slide time on a Cambridge machine making these jeans technically 50% stronger than leather. 
The styling, in our view, is classic Levi 511. The jeans come with D3O Ghost in the knees and the hips. The fly is fastened by a zip rather than buttons. The armor is adjustable in the knees, but to make getting the armor in the right place easier, the legends come in no less than four leg lengths. The legend jean is similar to a model that is made by Roka called the Tapered Slim, but we had Roka put in a little bit more volume into the calves for a little bit of extra comfort on the bike. We actually also do another version of the legend jean that we call the Legend Straight that's even more generous in the calf. The Legend is not the cheapest motorcycle jean that you can buy without doubt, but it is the finest. The Rooster Squad, in other words, this glove, is quite a special mesh style summer glove. It's a direct copy of a glove made by Oakley for the Special Forces. That glove was known as the Oakley Pilot Glove. The chassis comprises a loosely woven cordura, so it flows huge amounts of air, but it's got stretch woven into it, and as a result, it's an amazingly comfortable glove. Like the original, you've got a hard knuckle protector, but whereas the knuckle protector on the original was truly a hard knuckle protector, this one is made of D3O, which is gonna be much better in the event of an accident because it's gonna absorb much more energy. You get a webbing strap, as on the original Oakley glove, you get a webbing strap that tightens the glove as tightly as you want around the wrist. You've got leather palm, you've then got extra layers here of digi leather, as it's known, to give you extra purchase on the controls. This is our favorite summer glove. It's got everything a summer glove should have. And what's more, it's cheap as chips. It's the perfect summer glove in our view, and it just happens to work really well with our favorite jacket, the Klim Marrakesh. Here in the shop at Mojo Legends, we do not sell as many leather jackets as we used to. And that's because a lot of people who come here wanting something cooler for the summer months end up walking out with a Klim Marrakesh. But some people still prefer leather, some people just want leather. Every biker has to have a leather jacket at some point in their biking career. That's written down somewhere, I think it's a kind of a law. The Spiddy vintage jacket, this jacket, is made from a super soft cowhide. Now, I don't suppose any brand markets their leather jacket as having super stiff cowhide, but leather is what the Italians do best. And the vintage jacket has more the feel of a street jacket than a traditional bike jacket. The leather has been treated with oils for a touch of waterproofing, and it's been waxed to give it a kind of uh, an elasticity, uh, an element of stretch. I don't know how they've done this, but I can promise you it's there. In terms of shape and styling, the jacket's got to be said suits taller, thinner people better than shorter, fatter people. It has a drop down tail at the back, which makes it perfect for riding the bike. Too many leather jackets these days are cut for the street and can leave the lower part of the back exposed once you're on the bike. The jacket comes with spitted armor in the shoulders and the elbows. There's a pocket for a back protector. Technically, this jacket is not exclusive to Moto Legends. The vintage jacket appears in the Spiddy range, but we've had all of the badges removed because we thought it looked better. So this version is indeed exclusive to Moto Legends. Here at Moto Legends, we are unashamed flip lid fans. Truth be told, if you're being rash about it, we don't see why you would ever wear anything else. Okay, so we accept that a flip lid helmet is not very racy, so if you've got a super sports bike, you probably wouldn't want to wear a flip lid. A flip is not particularly cool, so if you've got a retro bike, you might think that a flip is not totally appropriate. And they don't tend to come with a peak, so if you've got an adventure bike, then you might not want to wear a flip. Although, of course, lots of adventure bike riders do. If you're being totally function about it, if you're looking at this from a functional perspective, then you have to say that flip lids have everything going for them. A flip lid is so much more practical. So let's say you're riding through France on a hot day. You hit a village, you lift the chin bar, you let a bit of extra cool air come in, you ride through the village. As you exit the village, you pull the chin bar down. So they're so much more versatile than a full face helmet. They're easier to get on and off, and a good quality flip lid will also be the quietest helmet you can buy because the way we put it on by lifting the chin bar and pulling the sides out, when we close the chin bar, it has a particularly tight neck roll and that is gonna stop the air coming in. That's why a good quality flip lid is so quiet. Now, this helmet, the new Shui Neotech 3, which only came out in 2023, is the best flip lid there has ever been. Of course, 
it's accredited to the new higher ECE 2206 safety standard. Shui has gone to great lengths to make this helmet even quieter than the Shui Neotech 2 was, and most people felt that that was a pretty quiet helmet. One of the things they've done is elongated these cheek pads towards the back of the helmet to stop air getting in around the neck because what they discovered was that air was coming in there and air that gets inside a helmet that reaches the ears, that obviously translates as noise. They've reduced air turbulence and disturbance here around the fitment for the comms and they've filled in the area, the void behind the sun visor mechanism because again on the two, what they discovered was that that was an area where noise was reverberating somewhat. They've also rounded the chin so it flows through the air better, again with the aim of reducing noise. Of course, you get all of the normal stuff. You've got a drop-down sun visor with the Neotech 3, comes with a Pinlock 120. You also get the facility to integrate a comms from Senna, and it's a particularly nice integration. This panel pulls out and the buttons go there. This panel pulls out and the aerial goes there. The comms will operate as either Bluetooth or mesh. Obviously, we can still change all of the internals in this helmet, so we can change the cheek pads and we can change the headliner to get a custom fit. This really is a fabulous helmet. In recent years, the bike world, let's face it, has gone a little bit adventure mad. And as a result, many bikers who've got an adventure bike feel that they need to have an adventure jacket with lots of pockets and lots of vents. Received wisdom, of course, is that such jackets should ideally have a laminated waterproof membrane. But really, such outfits are just touring and commuting outfits in an adventure aesthetic. If you really want to embark upon an adventure, riding off-road or in hot conditions, you need to adopt a layering approach. You will need a jacket or a pant with a removable waterproof membrane so that the large vents really can flow air directly through to the body. Now the Held Crazy Evo is the best adventure jacket we've ever come across. Clearly there's a matching pant that goes with it. The jacket has these huge unzippable vents and importantly the removable waterproof that sits inside the jacket can be worn on the outside as well because it's got stretch built into it. What's more it's a Gore-Tex membrane so if the rain is going to be light, you might leave the membrane on the inside. If you're going to be in for a torrent of rain over a number of hours, you'd wear it on the outside. You'd have the same level of protection from the elements that you'd get, for example, with a laminated outfit. The detailing throughout the Crazy Evo is simply exquisite. The armor is D3 throughout, including in the back. You get super fabric for added abrasion resistance. You get loads of adjusters and all of the other stuff that you would expect on a high-end jacket. What also has to be said about the Crazy Evo is it comes in an impressively large range of fits and sizes. Even though rationally everyone can understand the benefits of layering when it comes to motorcycle gear, most motorcyclists spend their lives looking for the one-stop solution that means that they can buy one suit and wear it everywhere in all conditions. Unfortunately, that suit doesn't exist which is why we have come to prefer a solution that sees one wearing a highly breathable outer jacket and then supplemented with breathable layers inside and perhaps a waterproof on the outside. But however you choose to dress on the bike, any layers that you choose must be breathable. It's particularly important with base layers, but actually the same applies to mid layers as well. The very best base and to some extent mid layers are made from merino wool. Merino has a number of amazing qualities. It breathes well. It wicks sweat away from the body very effectively. It can hold a high percentage of its own weight in moisture without the wearer feeling wet. And when it's cold, it traps a huge amount of heat to keep you warm. You can also wear it repeatedly over many days, weeks even, without it becoming smelly. Now, the best Merino wool in the world comes from New Zealand. The best New Zealand Merino comes from this company, icebreaker. That's why we offer it. We are, by the way, the only motorcycle company allowed to do so.
Without doubt, the most complete cold weather touring and commuting suit that money can buy is this. It's the Rucker Nivala. It's got a three layer Gore-Tex laminated pro shell construction. So there's nothing better in terms of both waterproofing and breathability. But the secret of the Nivala is the stretch that's built into the outer chassis. Three layer pro shell garments, laminated garments are very rarely comfortable, but because of the stretch, the Nivala is very comfortable. Of course, you've still got all of the usual rucker refinements, including, for example, Gore-Tex cuffs. The jacket comes, the jacket and the pant both come with 90% duck down, 10% duck feather thermal liners. Now, some people are put off the Nivala by its single A rating, and our view is that you shouldn't be. And that's because the suit comes with the most huge level two armor throughout, in the case of the jacket and the chest as well. Now, armor, this armor makes this one of the most protective outfits you can buy in terms of impact protection. But because large armor plays a huge role in abrasion resistance, then this indeed is also going to be very protective from an abrasion resistance point of view. In other words, this is still an incredibly protective outfit. Now, the Nivala has some vents, but you shouldn't think of this as a summer touring outfit. The natural habitat of the Nivala is the cold and the wet. So if you want the perfect jacket for winter riding conditions, relax, you've just found it. Proper tall touring commuting boots are in some ways always going to be more protective than a short ankle boot like this. And that's because you've got to be protected by the taller shaft. So if you hit something, that leather is going to provide added protection. A tall touring commuting boot is also probably going to be more waterproof than a short ankle boot like this. And that's because the rain hits the ground, it bounces off the road. It's going to find it easier to get over the shaft of a short boot like this than it will be to get over the shaft of a taller boot. But by contrast, short ankle boots are nicer to wear, easier to ride in, and certainly going to be much more comfortable off the bike. Now, the latest trend in short motorcycle boots, and as you might expect, it's coming out of the States, is a concept known as bike and hike. And what it does, it enables you to ride to your destination, park up, get off your bike, and then hike up a trail. The ultimate expression of this concept, bike and hike, is probably this boot, the Klim Outlander. It's not really like any other boot out there. It's got a real adventure feel to it, but without the buckles, the clips, and all the discomfort that you kind of associate with an adventure boot. It's about as protective as a short ankle boot can get. So you've got a hard counter here in the toe, one in the heel, D3 in the ankles, and also D3 in the tongue. The membrane is from Gore. So notwithstanding what I said about tall boots being more waterproof, this boot is gonna be about as waterproof as a short boot can be. But the Outlander's USP is undoubtedly its BOA lacing system. In essence, you pull this knob out and then you can just pull the tongue away. By contrast, when you want to get into the boot, you push the knob in, you wind it up, and you can tighten the boot to get it to the right level of tightness for you, as it were. Getting out of these boots, getting into these boots is just so easy. It actually makes laces seem somewhat old fashioned. But the Outlander is also outrageously comfortable. One thing I would say is it's got quite a wide fit. So if you are someone who can't find a boot that's wide enough, this is one of the widest fitting boots we know. It's a great boot, both for riding in and for walking in. We love it. We love the Klim brand and what it stands for. They produce some amazing gear, although I have to say we're not always huge fans of their suits. Our favorite Klim suit, however, is the Klim Carlsbad. It's actually not their top of the range adventure outfit, but we think it's their best. It's got a two layer laminated Gore-Tex Gore construction, so it's somewhat lighter and easier to wear than the Badlands. You get loads of venting and it comes with a full suite of D3O armor, so in the shoulders, in the elbows, and in the back. It is rated AA under EN17092. Now, with its adventure riding aspirations, the jacket fits a bit baggy and loose, but that's exactly what you would want. It's exactly what you'd expect when you're riding off-road because you don't want anything that is too restrictive as you're moving about on the bike. In typical adventure fashion, of course, it's got loads of pockets. It's got that adventure lock. There's a matching pant that goes with the jacket because this is, after all, a suit, and that pant is equally baggy. And that's what you want when you are riding off-road because, again, you need a pant that's going to go over a 
wide off-road boot. And actually what we're finding from a lot of adventure suits is they just won't go over an adventure boot. But we do often find that there's a problem with Klim's pants and it's to do with the positioning of the armor. It is simply too often too high. So we reckon that if you are after a Klim outfit, a Klim suit, you should come and see us because what we can do, we unsew the armor, we can reposition it, move it down into a better position. So if you are after a Klim suit, if you are after Klim Carlsbad, come and see us. There are basically three glove typologies out there. There's the summer glove, there's the winter glove, and then there's the summer waterproof glove, which is what this is. So a summer waterproof glove is basically a summer glove, but with no thermal component, but with a membrane. It's the glove that most of us would wear happily from say, end of March, beginning of April through to maybe November. A summer waterproof glove will keep you dry, obviously because it's got a membrane, but that membrane will also help to combat the effects of the windshield, so provide some protection from the elements. The most waterproof gloves, the most waterproof waterproof gloves, will have what is known as a laminated membrane from someone like Gore, what Gore would call a Gore Grip glove. We offer a lot of Gore Grip gloves. The three that stand out for us, however, are the Rucker Virium, the Risha Hypercane, and this glove, which is the Risha Atlantic. It's probably got the best spec of all of those gloves. It's got super fabric here on the, on the palm for added abrasion resistance. You've got a soft, quite comfortable D3O or shaped D3O knuckle protector. You've got a visor wipe and so on. It's a shorter cuff glove, which many people like, and it's probably the most comfortable gore grip glove out there. We really like it. We really like it. In a world that seems to have convinced itself that the only way to stay dry on a motorcycle is to wear laminated gear, we here at Moto Legends are still advocates of drop liner outfits, of drop liner jackets, drop liner suits. They are simply more comfortable, they're warmer, on a pari pursue basis they are less expensive, and importantly they are more reliable. And that's because it's very difficult and very time consuming to do laminated properly. And most people who do laminated, most brands who do laminated, do not do it properly. In less than three or four hours of rain, you are still going to stay bone dry in a drop liner outfit. And so for many motorcyclists, drop liner is still the best option. Our favorite drop liner suit, and probably the best on the market, is the Rucco Comfort R. We show the jacket here, but obviously it comes as a suit. Like the more expensive Rucco Nivala, the laminated Rucco Nivala, the Comfort R has stretch woven into its outer fabric, and that makes it incredibly comfortable. Of course, you also get all the other bits that you'd expect, vents, pockets, large level two D3O armor throughout, a reasonable quality thermal, and so on and so forth. Plus, with the Comfort R, you get Rucker's six-year warranty, in addition to Gore's lifetime warranty for the membrane itself. This is not the cheapest drop liner suit on the market, but you will stay dry on it. And I think that if you do the maths based on the guaranteed usage of the suit, in other words, for six years, you'll find that it actually offers incredible value for money. Here at Moto Legends, we don't sell lots of different helmet brands. I think that's pretty well documented. We tend to be a little bit picky. For us, Shui and Arai sit head and shoulders above the rest. They're not the cheapest helmets that you can buy, but they are on a number of scores the best. Now, there are obviously lots of different styles and types of helmets on the market, but if you're looking for a sports touring helmet, perhaps one more towards the sporting end of that particular spectrum, then the Shui NXR2, in other words, this helmet is right up there. It's not in any way a full-on race helmet, yet I can't see that there's a sports bike that this helmet would look wrong on. Now, because of its sporting pretensions, you do not get a drop-down sun visor, and that's pretty much a shoey thing. They figure that on a touring helmet, you want a drop-down sun visor, but on a more sporting helmet, you don't. There's also, by the same token, no built-in integrated comms capability, because again, sports helmet, they figure you're not gonna be talking to lots of other people. But if this is okay with you, and if you want a super comfortable, super lightweight helmet that's also pretty quiet, then I'm not sure that there's a better option out there. 
And of course, as it's a Shui, it can be totally custom fitted. We can put different cheek pads, different headliners in to get an almost perfect fit. Now, at the beginning of 2024, in other words, this year, Shui reduced the price of the NXR2 to make it even more competitive. Overall, we think it's a winner. We did not invent and design Scott's Ergo Pro waterproofs, but we did discover them before anyone else and we did make them famous. We recognized quite early on how much better they were than anything else on the market, which is why we swiftly discontinued every other waterproof we offered. We simply weren't prepared to offer a second best solution just because that solution might have been a little bit cheaper. Obviously, the Scots are totally waterproof. They're also more than acceptably breathable. But what makes them so special is the stretch that's built into the outer polyamide fabric, a fabric, by the way, that's also commendably strong. The stretch makes the Scots particularly comfortable to wear, but importantly, the stretch allows them to be worn tighter than most waterproofs, thus getting away from all that noisy flapping in the wind. We've sold thousands of pairs of Scots. Our customers rave about them. You will not find better waterproofs. They will keep you dry from the outside, but also from the inside, and they are so easy and comfortable to wear. There are lots of different styles of motorcycle boots out there, both short and tall. Our favorite short adventure boot is the Klim Outlander, but our favorite traditional laced ankle boot is definitely the Urban Racer from the Swiss brand Roker. It's a boot that, let's face it, just looks right, but it's built right too. They're perfect for wearing with jeans. They don't necessarily look like a bike boot, but they're as protective as a short boot gets. They don't have a waterproof membrane, but the leather is waterproof treated. And I cannot remember over the many years that we've been selling this boot, ever having a single complaint about the boot leaking water, letting water in. The, mood is, the boot is made using a Goodyear welt, which is the way boots have been made in Northampton for over a hundred years. Now, one of the benefits of a Goodyear welt is that they, can put a layer of cork between the upper sole and the midsole. And what happens is the foot makes an impression in that cork over time to create a near custom fit for the wearer. But that doesn't mean the boots are going to be comfortable from day one. This is the kind of boot that is going to benefit from a bit of wearing in. The Urban Racer is beautifully made, it's robust. It will eventually feel like a pair of slippers, but you have to take your time. And they're simply the best looking boot out there. It's the boot that everyone else tries to copy, but few of them succeed. This is the real deal. We love it. Not everybody needs, not everybody wants, and let's face it, not everybody can afford an all singing, all dancing, laminated jacket from someone like Rucker or Klim. The Lisvik is a drop liner jacket. It's simple, lightweight, and easy to wear, and it's inexpensive but you still get everything that you would expect on a proper motorcycle jacket. On, and when I say proper, I mean a much more expensive motorcycle jacket. It's AA rated, which is not unimpressive at this price point. Comes with level armor, level one armor in the shoulders and the elbows. There's a pocket for a back protector. But perhaps the most impressive feature of the Lisvik is its venting. You've got these vents here on the chest. You've got two exhaust vents at the back of the jacket, but these are fantastic. You get these full length vents that run up and down the arms. I think it's probably the best vented drop liner jacket that we've ever come across. Now, what you don't get with the Lisvik is any kind of thermal lining, but that's something that never worries us because in any case, we always prefer to provide our own. The Lisvik is the perfect hallway jacket. It's the jacket that you have when you wanna go out for a quick ride and you just can't be bothered to put all the clobber on. It's also a great starter jacket, a great jacket, jacket for someone who's starting out on their biking journey. But in truth, I think every biker needs something like the Lisvik as a kind of backup jacket. With the right layers, this jacket really is something that you could wear pretty much anywhere. It's not that we don't have an eye for good looking stuff. Of course we do. We love Roker gear, we love Bellstar's jackets, we love Spiddy's gear. But most of the time we try to put function ahead of form, which is why when it comes to a winter glove, our vote goes to this glove, the Risha Nordic GTX. Now, Risha is a distinctly mid-market brand, but when it comes to gloves, we reckon that this is a company that punches above its weight. They make some of the best 
gloves on the market. The Nordic is a two-chamber glove. In other words, two of your fingers go into this compartment, two into this compartment. What happens is most motorcyclists take a look at them when they're hanging up in the shop and they just move on because they think they don't look very cool. But don't worry, that's their loss. If you want warmth in a glove above all else, then what you want is a two-chamber glove. And the Nordic, in our view, is just about the best two-chamber glove out there. The membrane is by Gore, it's a Gore-Tex membrane. Insulation comes from Thinsula. The glove actually has an upper and a lower compartment, but in our view, just ignore that. Provided you've got heated grips, just use the lower compartment. Our view, get over the Nordic Star Trek looks. This is not a fashion contest. This is one of the warmest gloves you'll ever wear. This is gonna surprise nobody, but here at Motor Legends, we simply love the Marrakesh jacket. We reckon it's the best motorcycle jacket that money can buy. Now on its own, it's perhaps just a mesh jacket, which is fine. There are jackets that purport to do everything to be all things to all people, but the truth is that that jacket just does not exist. But with the right layers, the Marrakesh forms part of a system that will enable you to ride in absolutely any condition. The jacket itself is very breathable. It's like, I suppose, a mesh jacket on steroids. It's AA rated under EN 17092 and comes with a full suite of D3O armor. In the shoulders and the elbows, it's ghost. In the back, it's just a Viper protector. All the armor, by the way, is very easily upgradable to level two. Because of the stretch that's woven into the 1500 Denny Cordura outer shell, it's an insanely comfortable jacket. On its own, therefore, it's the perfect jacket for wearing in hot weather. In colder weather, you simply layer up. Now, personally, we like the windproof Zephyr layer. It's a super thin, gossamer thin, windproof layer that we put underneath. When it's colder, we put on the Maverick down jacket, both of which come from Klim, by the way. In the rain, we just put the Scott waterproof over the top. And in this way, the Marrakesh becomes the jacket that you can wear in all conditions. It does become, in some ways, the jacket that does it all. It's versatile, it's comfortable, it's protective. There's nothing quite like it. I have to say that this jacket is not gonna be the right jacket for everybody. It's not right for all kinds of riding. But for many riders, this really is going to be the best jacket that money can buy. Klim, let's face it, is the name when it comes to adventure gear. There are many pretenders, but Klim is the real deal. We don't like, it's gotta be said, everything that Klim produces, but some of their gear is simply sensational. They do some great gloves and some amazing boots. This boot, the adventure boot, is not like any other adventure boot on the market. It's much more protective than your average adventure boot, but it's much easier to live with than those big plastic jobbies that you get from people like Alpenstars. There's nothing this strong that's as easy to ride in or walk around in. The boot is Gore-Tex line for waterproofing. Protection is everywhere you look, and it has a particularly huge and a particularly strong toe box. In fact, this toe box accounts for one of the main problems with the adventure boot. The toe box is so big that it can be difficult to change gear in, but we have overcome this by supplying every boot with something called a sole shifter, and it's a bit that basically screws into the side of the boot here, makes changing gear a piece of cake. What makes the boot so easy to wear, to live with, to put on and take off, however, is its boa lacing system. It's simplicity itself and gives the boot an unparalleled level of adjustability. For us, riding a motorbike safely, probably more than any other single factor, comes down to being able to ride your motorbike comfortably. To ride well, you've got to be dry, not too hot and not too cold. And if in cold weather, if layering is not working for you, especially on longer journeys, that means going heated. Now we have no truck with all of the naysayers, those who suggest that real bikers don't wear heated and those who say that heated clothing is just too much fat. That's all simply outdated nonsense. Only a complete idiot would think that it's cool to ride a motorbike when you're shivering, whilst modern electrical gear is so easy to use. It has or it is almost devoid these days of wires, and it will heat you up as though you're a slice of bread in a toaster. The best heated gear comes from the American brand Warm and Safe, and this, their generation four jacket, at 90 watts, develops more heat than any other jacket on the market. 
It's lightweight and it's easy to wear. When you get to your destination, you can take it off, put it in a top box or a pannier, or you can wear it as a destination jacket. I think it's smart enough to get away with wearing it in that way. Me, I wear mine all year round underneath my Marrakesh. I have it on normally as a windproof layer. When it gets cold, I just plug it in with this one wire here, and then I can be as, as warm as I want to. The system operates on a small Bluetooth controller like this that you attach to the bike so you can adjust the heat as you're going along. Warm and Safe as a brand is horribly reliable. I have to say, I never leave home without it. This is the Held Air and Dry Glove. It's pretty much become my go-to glove. It's the glove that I wear most of the time. Now here at Motor Legends, we are not by and large big fans of two chamber gloves as they are known. Most of them are winter gloves and in our view, they simply don't work. We think they're little more than a marketing gimmick. We simply don't see the logic. We don't understand why and when you would put your hand in the upper compartment of a two chamber winter glove. Now the air and dries are also a two chamber glove, but they're different and in our view, they do work. This glove is basically a summer waterproof glove. In other words, a summer glove with a waterproof membrane. In the upper compartment, you're gonna have a membrane above and a membrane below. So you've got yourself a properly waterproof glove. Not only that, but it's gonna be a very good waterproof glove because the membrane comes from Gore. It's a Gore-Tex membrane. When you put your hand in the lower compartment, you're gonna have a membrane above, but you're gonna have nothing against the palm. The palm of this glove is a perforated kangaroo, so it's going to be highly breathable. And in this configuration, you'd be happy to wear this glove on on the very warmest days. The glove's got a mid-length cuff, it's got a hard knuckle protector, and all the other stuff that you'd expect on a premium glove. For many riders, this could be the only glove they're ever gonna need. Okay, so it's not a winter glove, but if you don't ride in the winter, this glove does pretty much everything else. It's become the glove that I wear almost everywhere. I even wear it on track. The other thing about this glove is, Held do this glove also in a short fingered configuration. The Arai Turex 4, in other words, the predecessor to this helmet, which is the Arai Turex 5, was around for many years. Indeed, it became somewhat iconic. In some ways, it was the first ever adventure helmet and came to almost own the adventure sector. Now, it has to be borne in mind that an adventure helmet is not the same as an off-road helmet. An adventure helmet is a helmet with an extended chin bar and also a peak. So it's a helmet that's designed to look as though it's the kind of thing that you could wear off-road. But the aim is not to compromise on-road wearability because really an adventure helmet is about wearing on the road. Now, the Turex 5 was released in January of 2024. So as we record this video, it hasn't been around for long. It's an improvement upon the Turex 4 in just about every single department. Obviously, it is accredited to the new safety standard EC2206, so in theory, it's going to be a safer helmet. You get lots of marginal improvements on this helmet. You've got a much improved mechanism for removing the peak and changing the visor, which was, I suppose, one of the main bugbears of the old helmet, the Turex 4. The venting on this new helmet is much improved. You get a huge visor, which will accommodate even the largest off-road goggles. The visor is also much improved from an optical quality perspective. The peak has also been redesigned to stop it moving about at speed on the bike, because that's one of the problems with the peak. It can move around, especially if you're riding on the road at speed. You get with the Turex 5, you get a 120, their latest Max Vision pin lock. Again, the Max Vision pin lock is going to give greater visual quality, greater optical quality. The Turex 5, has to be acknowledged, is identical to the Turex 4 in concept, but actually it is a totally new helmet in almost every respect. We are confident that this is going to become the defining adventure helmet. The Risha Warm Grip is like no other glove that we've come across. It's been designed for cold weather riding, but I'm not sure you'd call it a full-on winter glove. The glove has a waterproof membrane, but not just any waterproof membrane, it's a Gore-Tex membrane. Furthermore, this is what is known as a Gore Grip glove. And what that means is that this has a laminated membrane. The membrane is laminated to the inside of the outer shell of the glove. And what that means is that however long you ride for in the rain, this is a glove that will never wet out. The Warm grip, strangely for a 
winter glove has no thermal insulation at all on the palm. But this has been done to make the glove particularly effective with heated grips. And that's because when you put your hand around the heated grip, the heat will transfer very effectively to the palm and to the skin because it won't have to pass through any kind of thermal lining. All the thermal materials on this glove, and in this case, it's a thermal material known as Primalof, which is very well known, all of the thermal material is on the back of the hand. Of course, you've got all the other stuff too that you would expect to find on a premium glove. So you've got a padded knock protector, extra layers of leather on the palm, you've got a visor wipe, you've got 3M reflectors and so on. This is perhaps, it's got to be said, not the glove for the guy who gets up at five o'clock on a winter's morning to commute into work. But this is a very clever glove. The main appeal of which is that it doesn't feel like a winter glove, which let's face it, most winter gloves are a bit clumpy and heavy to wear. This glove doesn't feel or wear like a winter glove at all. Of course, if you don't have heated grips on your bike, it's a non-starter. Well, I hope you like some of those products. If you'd like to see more products, obviously visit the website motolegends.com. If you want to learn more about the products that we've talked about today, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, we've created a category that will take you through to all of those products. Now, when you're there, you can check on the spec in a little bit more detail, you can check on availability, and if you want to buy one of those products, you can do that there and then. When you do buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. Now, we have the best price promise in the business. John Lewis used to be rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise, but we go one stage better. If you can find any competitor selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. Now there are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, I can assure you, but if you are going to attempt to price beat us, I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, Again, go to the website. At the top, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there. Within seconds, you'll be in business. In future, you'll receive our email bulletins. If, however, you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, then we'd be simply delighted if you wanted to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make mention of our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the center of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've suggested, it's a small shop. It's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than four million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the country. But we'd like to think of ourselves as more than just the amount of merchandise we've got in the building. We're about service, we're about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest ranking of any business in the motorcycle industry. When you come and see us, we'll serve you the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And if you're lucky, you may even get to sample all of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.